from Socialist Action. He's a leader mem leading member of Socialist Action, is on the executive board of the Ontario Public Service Employees Union, and works in the Ontario Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change. He is the Workers' Action Movement candidate for Secretary Treasurer of the Ontario Federation of Labour at his upcoming convention in November. Julius, we're glad to have you. Thank you, thank you. Canada out of NATO, negotiate, don't escalate. The war in Ukraine poses a grave danger to humanity. The conflict will end by negotiation or it will end in nuclear destruction of the world. Socialist action is opposed to all wars except the class war. SA supports all struggles against oppression, including Palestine, Ireland, Central Africa, Haiti, and indigenous peoples across Turtle Island. We oppose a NATO victory. We oppose a Kremlin victory. Socialist action seeks the defeat of all the capitalist powers, starting with NATO and the Canadian state. During World War I, socialists called for revolutionary defeatism. Lenin, Trotsky, and Rosa Luxemburg said, turn your weapons against your commanders. Turn imperialist war into civil war. All power to the working class. In 2014, Kiev began the conflict in Ukraine's Donbass region. Since Russia's intervention in 2022, nearly half a million people have been killed and wounded, including both Ukrainian and Russian soldiers and Ukrainian civilians. Millions more have been displaced. Putin's denial that Ukraine is a nation, his aim to revive the Tsarist Empire, fuels reactionary nationalism on all sides. The USA and UK provided cluster bombs to Ukraine. NATO's proxy war will adversely affect Ukrainians for generations. NATO provoked conflict in Russia. NATO's expansion to Russia's borders, its violation of the Minsk treaties, its training and arming of the Ukraine's military, and support for Ukraine against its eastern Donbass region. These have been the principal causes behind the current conflict. NATO is an aggressive, U.S.-led military alliance that wages deadly wars in the former Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, Libya, Iraq, and Syria. NATO caused profound misery and a massive refugee crisis now swelled by millions more Ukrainians. Military spending in Canada has exploded. The Trudeau government so far delivered $8.5 billion in arms and funding to the Zelensky regime and it pledged more. This comes at the cost of housing, public health care, education, and climate solutions. In 2021, Canada spent $33 billion on the military. That's 15 times more than on climate change. In 2022, the defense minister announced military spending will increase by 70% over the next five years. NATO's demand for 2% of GDP is fueling a costly arms race. NATO is now stationed along the western border of Russia. Imagine how the U.S. would respond if Mexico invited China to set up military bases with nuclear missiles along the border of Texas. Do you remember the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis? That confrontation ended with the removal of Soviet weapons from Cuba and U.S. missiles from Turkey and Italy. We say to the Trudeau government, stop supporting the corrupt, anti-democratic, anti-labor Zelensky regime. His government and military are riddled with open neo-Nazis. It banned opposition, political parties, arrested their members, and ran through vicious anti-union legislation, including no to union organizing. It is selling off state enterprises and public lands to the highest Western bidders. The standing ovation in Parliament for an old Nazi soldier, a volunteer who fought under the German SS Galician Division, was disgusting. But it's not the fault of the Speaker. It's the fault of Justin Trudeau and of Christian Freeland, his Ukrainian nationalist deputy PM, for backing Zelensky and NATO in the first place. We demand the resignation of the Trudeau government and we demand that Jagmeet Singh and the NDP break with the Liberals. End the Confidence and Supply Act. Vote for homes, not drones. Vote for water bombers, not jet, fight, jet fighters. 
Demand freedom for all anti-war prisoners in Ukraine and Russia. Negotiate, don't escalate. Abolish NATO now. Thank you. Jack Dempster is a Toronto-based labour organizer and writer. He's speaking on behalf of the Communist Workers Circle. Jack Dempster. Sisters and brothers, the NATO imperialists and their puppet state in Kyiv must lose their war against the Donbass and Russia. Class conscious workers must defend the national rights of the people of the Donbass against Kyiv and its fascist battalions. Must support a Russian military victory in this war while giving no political support to Vladimir Putin's Bonapartist government. The capitalist Russian state, resting like Ukraine's on the ruins of a workers' state, deserves to be overthrown through working class revolution. But it is easy to call in the abstract for revolution, and much more difficult to fight towards it concretely. A decisive victory of labor over capital can only be realized by an unyielding dedication to the rights of oppressed nations and peoples. The presence of the Russian army was justified in Syria, and it is justified today in those parts of Ukraine which have voted to join Russia. The Ukrainian working class has been sent to die en masse in a war spearheaded by Nazis such as Azov. Capitalist media has whitewashed these fascists as freedom fighters, just as they labeled hardcore jihadists in Syria as moderate rebels. In the West, every yuppie professor and bourgeois politician is in a war frenzy, screaming for the blood of Ukrainian and Russian soldiers, ignorantly parroting the most depraved war propaganda. Billions of dollars worth of weapons have been sent to Ukraine. Rockets, cluster bombs, leopard tanks. Meanwhile, workers here in the West continue to suffer from skyrocketing inflation and the scourges of homelessness and hunger. One week ago, Vladimir Zelensky visited the Canadian Parliament. At that time, a Ukrainian man named Yaroslav Hunka, an old anti-communist who during World War II fought against the Red Army, was given a standing ovation by all parties, the NDP included. Shame on the NDP. When the news broke that Hunka was a veteran of the SS Galician Division, a Hitlerite unit which engaged in the Holocaust, all those bourgeois politicians tripped over themselves to apologize. But why do they apologize? The Canadian imperialist regime has been arming and training modern-day Banderites for years. Why do the politicians flinch at honoring the old guard, one of the thousands of Nazis whom Canada imported during the Cold War to attack the unions? After last week's disgraceful spectacle, politicians and professors suddenly find their parliament to be dirtied. Let's be clear on something. Parliament, that filthy monarchist house, is an institution of the bosses. It belongs to the bosses and cannot be reformed to serve the interests of the working class. It must be swept away and replaced by working class councils as the core of a new revolutionary government. The Russian capitalist army The Russian capitalist army, by the objective conditions in which it finds itself placed, is making it easier for us here to achieve these tasks. Canada is born of British imperialism. It is founded upon the basis of ethnic cleansing, racial oppression, and the exploitation of labor. The Canadian federal regime oppresses Quebec, denying its right to independence. Overseas, the Canadians have supported the occupation of the north of Ireland, the dispossession of the Palestinians, the aggression on Yemen. Canada itself has bombed Libya and occupied Afghanistan. Canadian imperialism, integrated with the US, UK and NATO, represents a force of aggression against the toilers and oppressed nations of the world, including Ukraine, whose national sovereignty has been crushed by Western imperialism. Down with NATO! Down with Canadian imperialism! Down with the bloody Kiev regime and its Nazi battalions! Victory to the Russian army! international solidarity of the working class and all oppressed peoples. Canada out of NATO now! 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 Of NATO now. Proxy wars are obscene! Stop the U.S. war machine! Proxy wars are obscene. Stop the U.S. war machine. Proxy wars are obscene. Stop the U.S. war.
to go out of style until NATO is abolished. There isn't a single thing you can think of that NATO ought to be proud of. You didn't back them up then, don't back them up now. They're up to no good. Okay, we got Jordan from the International Bolshevik Tendency. Long live the Soviet Socialist Republics. We're going to bring it back. Uh, so we're pleased to have endorsed and helped build today's protest demanding an end to NATO's proxy war in Ukraine. <clears throat> I think we can all agree that it is an extremely important initiative that challenges the pro-war narrative that's promoted in the mainstream corporate uh, press. Ukraine is being used as a pawn in a reactionary war between NATO and the Western imperialist powers on the one hand against their Russian rival. The same Western imperialist powers are targeting China next, which is in a foreign worker state that revolutionaries defend militarily against imperialism. Our organization believes that the single most, or one of the most important lessons to draw from the war in Ukraine is to conclude that the main enemy is not in Moscow, the main enemy is in Ottawa. In imperialist countries like Canada, anti-imperialist militants will want to see the defeat of NATO and Canada and the Canadian ruling class in this war. As the great German, revo As the great German revolutionary Karl Liebknecht said during World War I, the main enemy is at home. Now, we're united here to end the proxy war in Ukraine, but of course we have different perspectives on how to achieve that. Some of us, no doubt, will think that uh, peace negotiations are the way forward. But NATO and its Kiev client are not interested in peace. They're interested in war. And as Marxists, we understand that a lasting and a just peace is impossible under global capitalism and the imperialist world order upon which it rests. Ultimately, only socialism can bring about an end to poverty, oppression, and war. Others, of course, are demanding that Canada get out of NATO. Fair enough, but this demand, this demand suggests that Canadian imperialism might be less predatory and more progressive if only it was outside of the U.S. dominated NATO military alliance. Yes, but that fosters left nationalist illusions that maple leaf imperialism is somehow nicer and kinder than its American counterpart. That is not a perspective that our organization shares. This war in Ukraine demonstrates that imperialism once again is threatening to plunge the world into direct conflict between great powers. In what would be a third world war, a nuclear war, in which billions potentially could die. We must get rid of capitalism before it kills us. And in order for the working class to become conscious of its historic role and mission of ridding the world of capitalism, a revolutionary communist party must be built to lead the way forward. We encourage everyone interested in our organization, the IBT, to come check out our liter literature table, visit us online at bolshevik.org, and continue discussing strategies for building an anti-imperialist movement to end NATO's proxy war in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. I say Canada, I say NATO, you say out. NATO, NATO. I say NATO, you say out. NATO. Ukrainian. Um, so I don't know if uh, folks.
folks here have like really done some history on what that means, but um, it's a it's uh, far right and. Uh, And we do not tolerate ethno-nationalism. Um, okay. Um, well, I don't, none of us here support fascism, correct? And when you're fighting to actually end a war, you often run up against it. And they can say, oh, they got fascists over there and they got fascists over here. But the fact is, what we are actually what we are actually standing up against is really vicious nationalism and it's no coincidence that NATO has found itself on the side of far-right organizations again and again and again because they can be relied on to forward its cause where socialists cannot and that's why we're taking yes Fight against fascism. We got Ben Marlensky, and we got Ken Stone. Um, ben, come on up, Ken. Where are you? Shame on those chanting Slava Ukraini, a Nazi slogan. Shame. Shame. Okay, I'm gonna tell you straight up right now, I'm concerned, in fact, because slogans like that are extreme. No, I'm not talking about you, Ben. Are extremely provocative, and it's a chant. Right now, if you're, if you're saying, you know, if you're saying Slav Ukraini, it's what you're talking about. Like, these are words of, these are, yeah. Um, ben? Yeah, but we're not going to get... We're just going to keep on going. We're not going to respond to them. Death to Nazis! and caused 8 million people to be displaced. And we need to be clear that this war didn't need to happen. For roughly 70 years, Ukrainians and Russians lived in relative harmony. The USSR, even with all of its problems, united the peoples of Eastern Europe and Central Asia in shared opposition to capitalist order. In the early days, in, in, the, in the late 1910s, early 1920s, the USSR even had the policy of Ukrainization. The greatest affirmative action program in history to promote Ukrainian culture after years of science of great Russian chauvinism. But after the economies of the, of the USSR, my guys in the 80s and 90s, all the national tensions we existed uh, within the USSR and the war, we saw this in opposition with all the war and with the ongoing genocide of Armenians in the Ukrainian war program. We saw it in Yugoslavia in the 90s.
the, the, the Donetsk and Luhansk right to south of Germany three days before the 2022 invasion. And when he invaded, he claimed that Russian, that, that Ukrainian nationhood is a Leninist invention. And that one of the goals of the invasion is to demilitarize Ukraine, which would certainly require a regime change uh, and a long-term occupation of Ukraine. Uh, and, at the, uh, and at the start of the invasion, he did attack Kyiv and uh, only retreated to the east and south when that campaign proved unsuccessful. Russian, just like the American capitalists, have significant interests abroad. The year before the invasion, Russian capitalists invested over $64 billion abroad, which is a greater percent of their GDP than the US or EU. But we need to remember that the main enemy is at home. And we're here because we oppose NATO. We oppose our own side in the war first. It is our job to fight against the Canadian government, the US government, the NATO regime that, co that caused this in the first place. We're here, and so we call on workers in Ukraine and Russia to turn their guns on their imperialist masters, on their capitalist masters. We stand in solidarity with those anti-war protesters who've been resisting mobilizations. And we believe that one day, Ukrainian and Russian workers will be reunited in a free federation of socialist republics, and we should do that right here in Canada. Thank you. Abolish NATO. I say abolish, you say NATO. Abolish. Abolish. I say abolish, you say NATO. On behalf of the Canada White Peace and Justice Network, a big shout out to all of you for joining our Canada Wide Week of Action to end the war in Ukraine. And kudos to you as well for forming the, the new Toronto Coalition Against NATO and for affiliating to our network. There are many reasons to oppose NATO's proxy war against Russia and Ukraine, which have been ably outlined by the previous speakers like to focus on two more, and they are the supply by NATO of cluster bombs and depleted uranium weapons to Ukraine. Cluster bombs are a prohibited weapon according to conventions signed by Canada and most countries of the world. When Biden announced two months ago he was supplying them to Ukraine, Trudeau issued a perfunctory statement of condemnation of these weapons, but kept on sending more in arms and funding to the Zelensky government, some of which arms can be used to fire cluster bombs. According to prominent Canadian lawyer Dmitry Lascaris, Canada's actions violate Article 1C of the Convention, which states that state parties must not encourage any Anyone to use these weapons. Using cluster bombs is a war crime. Supplying cluster bombs to Ukraine makes NATO's war in Ukraine an illegal war. If Trudeau had a wit of independence or sovereignty in his blood, when Biden announced he was sending cluster bombs, Trudeau would have said, Canada is withdrawing from the conflict. But shamefully, he didn't. Shame on Trudeau. Depleted uranium weapons have been used by NATO in the former Yugoslavia, Iraq, and Syria, and many other countries, with it leaving behind a toxic legacy of well-documented outbreaks of cancer and horrible birth defects. Both the USA and UK have delivered DU weapons to Ukraine, which also can be fired from artillery supplied by Canada 
to Ukraine. Cluster bombs and depleted uranium both leave behind for the civilian population a crisis lasting for generations. Farmers and children in Southeast Asia are still dying and losing limbs left as a result of cluster bombs left in the environment by the U.S. war 50 years ago. The supply of these weapons by NATO countries to Ukraine belies NATO's claim that it is trying to help Ukrainians. Ha ha, what a laugh. Actually, it is in the process of turning Ukraine into a killing ground for both soldiers and civilians. This fact prompted Glenn Michalchuk of the anti-war AUUC, the Association of United Ukrainians of Canada, to remark in our recent Networks uh, webinar, quote, I quote Glenn here, if you support Ukraine, and the people over here should listen to this, if you support Ukraine, you should favor a negotiated end to the conflict now. change hat and ask a few questions on purely on my own behalf. First question, are you angry about Parliament celebrating Yaroslav Kuka, a Nazi walk and SS war criminal? Are you angry? Second question, are you embarrassed by the fact that not even one member of Parliament refused to rise in the House of Commons to give Shame indeed. The Canadian government also admitted thousands more Nazi collaborators from Eastern Europe, including the grandfather of Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland. To this day, Deputy Premier Christian Freeland refuses to admit what everybody knows that Chomiak collaborated big time with not the Nazi occupation of Poland. Nazi and Nazi and he, she claims it's di Russian disinformation. Can you believe that? Nazi Successive Canadian governments helped these far-right white supremacists from ethnic organizations such as the UCC, which is the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, and funded them generously right up to today. The purpose was twofold, to create a constituency in Canada for a NATO-generated Cold War against Russia. That's a perfect example. And to undermine the government of the USSR. In 2014, the U.S. and Canada spent billions of dollars staging a coup in Kiev, overturning a democratically elected government. Canada's Foreign Minister, John Baird, showed up in the Maidan Square, flanked by the leader of the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress, 
in support of the neo-Nazis, who were the foot soldiers of the West. The Stephen Harper government allowed the neo-Nazis to use the Canadian Embassy as a refuge during the Maidan protest. And the Trudeau government, with Freeland as the Global Affairs Minister, poured hundreds of millions of dollars into the new de facto NATO Army of Ukraine, using NATO's Project Unifier to train 33,000 soldiers, including the, the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion and many other extremist organizations. The junta running Ukraine was riddled with neo-Nazis, especially in its security services. These neo-Nazis were inspired by Stepan Bandera, the same Bandera who inspired Hanka and his neo-fascist uh, neo, neo uh, collaborators to ally themselves with the Nazis and fight Russia. Today, Ukraine celebrates Bandera with a national holiday on January 1st. Statues are put up to Bandera everywhere. And even in Canada. And moreover, all this, while tearing down the statues of war heroes who, have, who resisted the fascists in World War II, Zelensky, Zelensky accommodated himself to these neo-Nazis and he continued the war against the Donbass. He banned Russia, he continued the ban on the Russian language. He banned opposition parties and, their, and put their leaders in jail. He, uh, he outlawed parts of the Eastern Orthodox Church. He introduced legislation to ban unions. He's selling off state enterprises to the highest bidder and farmland as well. I ask you, the, the, brothers and sisters, does this man warrant multiple standing ovations from our MP? <laughs> Meanwhile, in Canada, a historical revisionism has taken place, trying to equate fascism and communism as twin evils. Despite the fact that during World War II, Canada was allied to Canada was allied to Russia in the global struggle to defeat German, Italian, and Japanese fascism. So it should come as no surprise that because Hunka fought Russians, he was last month celebrated as a hero in Parliament. Trudeau knew who he really was. Christian Freeland knew who he really was. Zelensky knew who he really was, and he didn't complain about him at all. It's not enough, in my opinion, that Rhoda resigned. In my view, Trudeau should resign. In my opinion, Freeland should resign. According to Dmitry Lascaris, Canadian lawyer, Hunka should be immediately put on trial and here in Canada for war crimes. And as for the MV MPs who acted like train seals, they don't deserve their fat salaries and benefits. 68% of Canadians in a recent public opinion poll said that they were opposed to further sending of arms to Ukraine. Over 25% of Canadians are in favor of a negotiated end to the conflict. But you wouldn't know it by looking or listening at our parliamentary MPs, because not one, one single one of them supports us. I say that all of the MPs in Parliament should resign and make way for a new election so that we might actually represent, might actually elect some MPs who represent us and the majority view of the Canadian public. In conclusion, in conclusion, the whole NATO war narrative is unraveling, brothers and sisters, with the Canadian public finally paying attention. We should therefore redouble our efforts to convince Canadians that there should be an immediately, uh, uh, an immediate, pay <laughs> there should be an immediate beginning of negotiations to end the war in Ukraine. Here, here. And that should happen when I say immediate. That
that's because pe rational people are worried that this war might spread mushroom into a wider European war or even a nuclear confrontation between the great powers. It can only be through peace, brothers and sisters, that the twin calamities that humanity now faces, the environmental and the health crises, can be solved through the international cooperation of all countries of the world. Peace now, no to war, no to NATO. Thank you for inviting me. is highly xenophobic. It opens the door to all kinds of racism. And as we continue to move through this war and pointing toward China, the implications there are very serious. War lends itself to fascism and it always has. We need to oppose this all the way through. Abolish NATO. Now as for how we're going to you know how, how we get out of here. Uh, first of all, <laughs> if someone's shouting at you or they disagree with you, you got you're in, under instruction right now to ignore them. So all of us here who have come to oppose NATO, we're going to walk out. Stay with your friends. Make sure no one's leaving alone, and uh, make sure that no matter what they say, you just ignore. It works. We're going to keep on organizing, and we're going to. And we're not going to stop. So find, find your friends. We're going to we're going to walk out together. You can help us pack up. And uh, the struggle is international. I don't, I don't agree with that. Hands off your brain! Hands off your brain!
Because, because if, if, if you get here, 